We ask that you will prosper this time. You will honor your word. You will empower your word. You will confirm your word. You will give us spiritual words to explain spiritual truths. Your word will not be difficult to explain. It will not be difficult to understand. Lord, enlarge our capacity to receive. Jesus, please help us now. Help us now. Help us now. Lord Jesus, let your people hear you. Let your people see you. Be magnified in the midst of your people. Thank you, our Father. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Can we please be seated? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for the honor. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord Evangelist God, my friend, my brother, my covenant brother. Actually, the man who raised me up in ministry says, if you have one time opportunity to preach in any meeting, you are invited and all of that, preach in such a way that they will not call you back. <laughs> Preach in such a way that they will not give you honorarium. So, um, I'm glad to be back because I, well, the last time I didn't expect that I would come back. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate you. It's not a right. It's a privilege. There are so many fantastic preachers in town. But between me and him, what connected us is not just fantasy. It is deep. And we pray that that connection will bat eternal reward. It will bat eternal result in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that God will help us in this session. Things that I want to share since yesterday, I've had several of our men of God, even this morning, I've shared it in peace and pieces like a puzzle. I just put it together so that I can be simple to understand to all of us. And so I'm trusting that God will help us. Psalm 46 and verse 1 says, God is our strength and refuge, ever present help in the time of trouble. I'm praying for somebody today that for every challenge that you are going to face as we cross into the new year, God will give you help. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs 18 and verse 29. David said, with your help, I can run through a troop. With your help, I can jump over a wall. I speak to you that as you go in the days ahead, the limitation of this year will not matter again. Because God will give you help to jump. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 121 verse 1. I will lift off my eyes unto the hill. And where will my help come? My help will come from God. The maker of heaven and earth. Hear me. Your help will not just come from abroad. It will come from above. I say your help will come from above. And you see, God has been helping us brilliantly since yesterday. And I'm trusting that he's going to help us more. Isaiah 40, 29. He gives strength to the weak and power to the weary. The young, verse 30. The young man will walk and be tired. They will run and be weary. But to those that wait, 31, upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not, they will munch up with like eagles. God said, there's somebody here. Before you came here, you were rising and falling. But as you live here, you will rise and not to fall again. You will rise and not to fall again. You will run and not be tired again. In fact, as you live here, you are going to begin to fly. The limitation of the past will not matter again because the Lord will do a new thing. 
the setback of the past will not matter again because the Lord will do a new thing. Psalm 40 verse 2 and verse 3. The Lord has lifted me from every merry clay and he has planted my feet upon the rock. He has given me a new song. A hymn of praise to my king. Many will hear and will give I will put the address. I'm praying for somebody today. From here, the Lord will give you a new song. Yeah. Song of victory. Yeah. The Lord will give you a new song. Songs of deliverance. The Lord will give you a new song. Songs of restoration. The Lord will give you a new song. Songs of lifting. The Lord will give you a new song. Yeah. Song of ascent. Yeah. Job 22:29. He says, when men are saying they are casting down, you will be saying that they lift. I'm praying for somebody this afternoon that there will be a lifting for your life. There will be a lifting for your destiny. I said there will be a lifting for your purpose. The book of Psalm 5 and verse 12 for surely, O oh Lord, you will bless the righteous and you will surround them with favor like a shield. I pray for you this afternoon that God will surround you with favor in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you have opportunity to be here, please don't waste that experience because one thing I have come to appreciate is that when you finish this kind of meeting, the devil is waiting for you to attack your experience. I hope you know that. Oh, one of my son, I mean, mighty in prayers. Can you please sit down? Thank you. If that brother is praying, if you are dead, you will rise up and pray. And he went for a meeting like this. He came back from that meeting. The third or the second day, he fell into fornication. Fantastic, I mean, mounted top experience. But I'm praying for you today. Psalm 124 and verse 7, like a bird that escaped from the snares of the fowler. Oh, the snare is broken over your life. I said, the snare is broken over your life. You will not run into the ambush of the devil. As the devil will not mess up the experience you have here. It will be enduring. I say it will last. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to be sharing with us in a few minutes what I call spiritual rules for enduring ministry. Spiritual rules for enduring labor. The, the problem is not that you are in power. The problem is that is it going to last? The problem is not that you are anointed. The problem is, are you going to last in the anointing? And you know the mind of God? The mind of God for you and I is that we are not just going to be a flash in the pan. We are not just going to appear and disappear. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And I'm praying for you. For your generation, you will appear. And you will not fade away. In the name of Jesus. There are men in our, in our, in our country. If I mention their name, maybe you will struggle to remember. They are not dead. They just faded away in the purpose of God. They just faded away in the plan of God. I'm speaking to you. You will last in the plan of God. I say you will last in the counsel and in the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus. I stumbled upon the story of a man recently. He broke me down. Charles Templeton. Many of you may not know him. He shared stage with Billy Graham. In fact, they were calling the ministry together. More gifted and anointed than Billy Graham. That man died an atheist. The devil, his faith collapsed. I mean, I'm not saying... Billy Graham and Charles Templeton were already conducting massive ministry, massive outreach. I mean, massive outreach. In fact, that is the man you should know. It should, it should not be Billy Graham that you should know. It, that's the man. The man just faded away. So it's not, it's not, it's not about what God is doing now. 
is about are you going to last? And can I say this to you? The plan of God for you is that you will last. And by the grace of God, you will last. In the name of Jesus. The reason why men don't last is that they violate spiritual rules. And in the realm of the spirit, just like in the physical, ignorance of rule is no excuse. I hope you know. So if you run through one way, the police, I say, I don't know it's one way. Will the police release you? I like said, if it's Nigerian police. The first thing for you is to know the rules. Some of those rules are not difficult. Some of them are actually very simple. But several of us don't know that it matters. That's number one. Some of us don't, we know them in part and we still don't keep them. But I'm praying that what I'm going to be sharing with you this afternoon will not be an indictment on you in eternity. It will not indict me in eternity because we will know it and we will do it. Rule one is called the rule of personal spirituality. A man who wants to last in the anointing, a man who wants to do something enduring for God, must first pay attention to his own spirituality, to his pursuit of God. The reason why God is laying hold on you first is not that he wants to send you out. Listen, there must be presence before platform. Hello? Did you hear what I said? There must be first presence. Before what? Before platform. Several of us are running after platform and we are ignoring presence. We are us. That is the foundation that carries your platform. And so if your presence is not deep, you are soon going to fade away in your journey. I hope you know that the taller a tree is, the deeper the root. Am I correct? If your root is shallow and you want to grow in such a way that everybody will see you, the slightest storm will bring you down. The, light, the slightest temptation will bring you down. Mark chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Jesus appointed the twelve. He called them to him. And he designated them as apostles so that they can be with him. So that they can be with him. And that he might send them, actually sending out his secondary. Hello? The real thing is that you might be what? Because everything about ministry is revealing Jesus. Hello? So, to the degree that you know Jesus, to that degree, you can reveal him. Am I correct? Whether it's music, whether it's teaching, whether it's apostolic, whether it's prophetic, the ministry that you do that is not revealing Jesus, it doesn't count too much in eternity. Hello? Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. When they saw the apostle on the street of Jerusalem, you know what they said? They took notice of them. They are on school. They are on leg, but they have what? They have been with Jesus. Can your generation say that of you? You know? You know that what we are focusing on today is the paraphernalia of office. The shoe, the suit, the collar, the packaging, you know. Many people have fought me, my friends, my contestants, the packaging money. When I started my ministry, I started as a missionary. So there's nothing to package in the bush. <laughs> I'm just getting better. When I came out of, when I came out of the mission field, and I came to the city. I can wear black shoe, green trouser, and yellow shirt. I'm alone, I'm not here. My mom said, oh, God. And you know, I won't want to And you know, our world is a packaging world. It has to be attractive before they will open it. In fact, I've gone to preach in places they didn't know I was the guest speaker. They just pushed me at the back. It was saying, they say, ah, when it was time they come, and I was going to say, ah, I need one tap at home, boy. <laughs> but several times when I'm done, they forget what I wear. They don't even remember. I'm praying for you that you will grow in the revelation of Jesus. Second Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge 
in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Can I say this to you? If, if you lose platform, please don't lose presence. Hello? Platform can come and go. Presence must come and grow. Hello? May you grow in his presence. I said, may you grow in his presence. I hope you know that Joseph changed platform. Joseph changed platform from prison, from, from, he changed platform from, from Potiphar's house to prison. But the only thing that is constant is what? God was with him. I'm praying for somebody today. I know that you lost it. Okay. It became a parable in the land that the glory is gone. Ichabod. I'm praying for somebody today that the cause of Ichabod is broken over your life. The cause of Ichabod is destroyed over your life. You will not be a shadow of yourself. In anointing, you will not be a shadow of yourself. In relevance, you will not be a shadow of yourself. In, in delivery, you will not be a shadow of yourself. In, in utterance, you will not be a shadow of yourself. In impact, you will not be a shadow of yourself. In the name of Jesus. Number two, number two, is what I call rules of personal consecration. There must be consecration before ministration. Though we are trying to reverse that today, Exodus 30, 30, God said to Moses, anoint Aaron and his son and consecrate them so that they might minister to me. Consecrate them so that they can minister. It must be consecration before what? Before ministration. That's the second rule. But men are not paying attention to their consecration now. They are not pay- They just want to min- they just want to minister. So a man who has not been done well is rushing out to minister. We have two kinds of consecration. We have general consecration. Then God will begin to give a man co- rules. That is specific to his call. So, sexual purity is a general consecration. Moral purity is a general consecration. Financial integrity is a, is, is a general consecration. When you begin to pay attention to that, to all of those general consecration, and you know what I mean? It's not a big it's not a big English. Consecration is your diligence to remove yourself, to separate yourself from everything that defiles and to dedicate yourself to the holy use of God. So, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19 says, God's foundation stands sure, still with this inscription, that those who name the name of the Lord should do what? Should depart from iniquity. In the master's house, they are vessel of unto honor, they are vessel unto dishonor. If a man, that's, that's consecration. If a man, es, excuse me, who will do it? A man, a man. If a woman. But you know what we do? What we do is not to pay attention to our consecration. What we do is to rationalize our weakness. God understand. Anger is in my bloodline. I inherited it. God knows I'm weak when it, when it comes to women. You don't deal with it. I hope you know that Moses is reputed to be the meekest man on the face of the earth during his time. Excuse me, am I correct? And every time Moses got angry, he got angry for the right reason. Hello. Moses went to the mountain, got, got the tablets. He was coming. The congregation has already gone into idolatry. And he smashed it. 
I'm sure you expect God to commend him. Motris, I trust you. But guess what? If Moses has been patient enough to just read the first line of the law, that is the solution to the problem in the camp. Before Moses will see that what is going on, God has already saw it and gave him the solution to it. Do not have any other God apart from me. He didn't bother to read it. He crashed it. Hello? Ecclesiastes 7.9 Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit. Anger resides on the bosom of fools. I'm praying for you today. Small or big, whatever will disqualify you in ministry, I pray that the mercy of God will prevail over your life. After general consecration, you now come down to specifics. The book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 6, chapter 6, and verse 6 to 7, he's talking about Nazareth vow. The kind of vow that Samson carried. He says, the specific of Nazareth vow is that that man must not touch dead body. That's his vow. He says, even if your father died, if your mother died, if your brother died, if your sister died, you must not go to that burial ceremony. You must not risk it in case your hand may touch the coffin. Excuse me. If a man is under that kind of vow today, you know that that man is in trouble with his family. <laughs> Am I correct? My senior brother died. And they were bringing him from Calabar. On the day he was supposed to come to be buried, I would already had a preaching appointment. And we had a family meeting. They said, Pastor, you know you are the chief mourner here. You are the one that should bury your senior brother. So, I said, don't worry. But the problem is this. Well, we share the bills. I pay my own. I said, I won't be available. Because I already had a preaching appointment. And in all honesty, that place, I was the one who gave them the date. They gave me several options. I said, give us the one that is... And I chose... So, I had already chosen that date before, before the issue of burial started. I said, I can't come. My sister rose up against me. He said, what do you mean? What do you mean? We said, you should go, and, you should go to Calabar and bring your sinner. I said, bury him there. There's no point. He's dead already. There's no point bringing it. He said, eh, but if you want to go, I, I won't follow you. You go and carry a corpse. In our ministry, I work with missionaries. You know our rule. Where you serve is where you are buried. If your family say we should not bury you there, they will pay for all the costs of transporting you. It's not wickedness. That's, that's the rule. Okay? You remember the story of Rechabites? You remember them? Jeremiah 35. Jeremiah 35. Their father instructed them not to drink. Their father instructed them not to build a house, not to sow vines. Jeremiah 35 verse 8 and 9. And God said to Jeremiah, go and bring them and offer them drink. And offer them drink. Ah, and he said, since our father instructed us, we have never, we have never, that's the rule of their consecration. And guess what? Rule of consecration that says that you must not build a house. Oh my God, even if you have money, you can't buy land like everybody is God. Because of what a man imposed on you. You can't plant a fire. So the anointing is a wandering anointing. They have to be living in tent and be carrying it around like them. When the children of Israel were living, were living in, in wilderness, God said, There's somebody here. I gave you a rule for your anointing and you have violated it repeatedly. Today, mercy will overrule for you. I said, Mercy will overrule for you. Number three rule. Is what I call the rule of brokenness. In ministry today, 
We have men who are anointed but not broken. We have men who are gifted, not broken. Men who are rich, not broken. Men who are called, not broken. Can I say this to you? What determines whether you last in the anointing? What determines whether you last in the hand of God? Is not your anointing or power, it's your brokenness. Hello? If you disagree with me, ask Samson. Ask Judas. It can't be better than that. Jesus laid hand on Judas. And he brought in results, just like other apostles. People healed under his ministration. Demons were casted out. But Judas crashed out of the apostolic anointing. Acts chapter 1 and verse 25. Peter describing the fall of Judas says, His place, let another man take it. For a man who is not broken, that man is just an accident waiting to happen. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me to die. Galatians 6.14 May I not boast in anything, except in the cross of Jesus, through whom I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. John 12 and verse 24 Except a wheat of grain falls down and die. John 12, 24. He abides alone. That's why me say, when God calls a man, he calls him to come and die. Die to self. Die, die to self. Die to sin. Die to the world. Die to ambition. Die to applause. When a man is dead, excuse me, if they are clapping for that man, can he respond? And do you know, the, you know what is driving you in ministry? Applause. People's commendation. You must die to it. You must die to insult. Excuse me. When the man is dead, if you step on that man, can you, can he complain? It's tough. And yet, unless a man is broken, and you know in our, in our world, when something is broken, that thing is crabbed. Am I correct? When a phone is broken, a car is broken, a camera is broken, the value falls. In the realm of the spirit, it's opposite. When a man is broken, God plays a premium on that man. God plays a high premium on that woman. I'd like to say this to you. Submit yourself to the dealings of God to break you. Sometimes what you are looking for deliverance for, what you are looking for escape, God, is, is, a, is a set up from heaven to break you, to break your pride, to break your ego, to take you to a deeper level of brokenness. Okay? I'm praying for you this afternoon that you will stay in the hand of the master to finish what he started in your life. In the name of Jesus. Number four. Are we number four? I've lost my count. Rule of service. Ministry is first a call to service before it becomes a call to honor. Hello? And you know, today, what drives us is the honor, the title, the papa, the welcome, sir, the honorarium. That's what drives us. And yes, primarily, ministry is a call to service. Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Jesus said, The man, I have not come to, to be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. First Peter 4 Peter 4.10 Every man should use the gifts that he has received to serve. 
every man should use the gift that he has received to serve faithfully administering the grace of God in diverse form. Every man should use the anointing to serve. Today, we are cashing on on the anointing. We are commercializing it. Let me say this to you. When you put a, when you put, when you put a price tag on the anointing, you demonize that anointing. If it's a prophetic anointing, the moment you put price tag on it, you become a soothsayer. That's what happened. That's what happened. And that's why such things don't last again. Okay? So it's a, it's a serve. Even at the highest place. So you see, if a man is a general overseer, and he has in his, he has in his garage, pool of cars, that is using as convoy, and there's a missionary under him, who actually need that vehicle in the bush, but he's not giving it out. You know he's not serving. Excuse me. That's not, that's not service. When God gives, when God gives a man resources, when God gives a man influence, when God gives a man capacity in ministry, all of those things to serve. It's not just to call attention to himself. And I'm praying that God will give us a service heart. I say God will give us a service heart. In the name of Jesus. Luke 17, 10. Jesus speaking to his disciple. He says, any one of you has a servant who has gone to farm and he comes back. Will you say, okay, you try it. Go and sit down and eat. What will you say? say Go and prepare my food I want to eat. And verse 17 and verse 10 says, after we have done everything we should have done, we should say to ourselves, we are just, we are just unprofitable servants. That's what we are. Oh, more, do I lie lere? You should do your work, you should not be thanked. You should not, <laughs> you should not be appreciated. No one already on. No pastor shower. So if they bring it, my first church that I pastor, So the council member say, first Sunday I got there. Say, Pastor Femi, ah, how much do you want to collect as our pastor? <laughs> I said, me collect. Hey, listen, owe me. You can't pay me. I have a rule. I don't negotiate pay in ministry. I don't negotiate on a radio. I said, what you have, just give it to me. And after they have talked, they say, well, ah, yo, two thousand, I'm a few years recharge card. <laughs> I said, go and bring it. And I will not, I will not preach about it on the altar. I will not say this church, they are not taking care of their pastor, they are wicked. I won't say it. I won't say it. The man who brought me up says, no, they are not the one who called you. If you want to collect money, go and talk to the man, to the man who sent you now. Why are you putting your body on the church? You see the mess that we are putting ourselves. No pastor has a right to argue for pay. Because it's not the church that employed you. It's tough, Abby. Excuse me. Okay, excuse me. Who called you? The church or God? Let's go. Number five. Are we number five? The rule of faithfulness. Luke sixteen ten. Jesus said, "He who is faithful in much is faithful in little." The book of Matthew twenty five, twenty five and twenty one. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Matthew twenty five twenty three. Well done, my good and faithful servant. The book of 1 Corinthians 4 2. It is required for stewards that they must be found faithful. You know all of us. Our success is our success in ministry is not determined by the crowd. Every minister has a, has a crowd of one. 
not not the people I'm looking at. So if you have if you pastor a church of one thousand, they said how many people? I said one thousand. You know today we boast about our seating capacity. My church can seat ten thousand. God is not interested in your seating capacity. Actually, God is interested in your sending capacity. How much are you sending out? The story says the church in Antioch was about 100. And they sent Paul and Barnabas their best. Their best. No pastor wants to send his people out of the church. Want to keep them in church. Okay. Your success is not determined by how many people you minister to. Every servant has an undies of one. Who is that man? The man who commissioned him. As you are preaching to one million people, they are not in the right capacity to determine your success. The man who determines your success is what? The man who commissioned you to ministry. God who called you to ministry. Because when the ships are down, those crowd will not be there when you face your assessment. Am I correct? Okay, so Samuel said to Saul, go and wait. Go and wait. I'm coming to come and do the sacrifice. And men began to pressure Saul. Let's do the sacrifice. The Philistine are on us. And somebody said, give me seven days. I mean, just, just go and wait. By the seventh day, just as Saul was finishing the sacrifice. Samuel showed up. Ah, Samuel said, what happened? He said, eh, well, you know, my soldiers are running away. They are pressurizing me. In fact, they want to stone me. Ah, Samuel said, but I told you to go and wait. When God took that kingdom away from Saul, the crowd, can they save him? Who pressured him to take those decisions? Faithfulness means your readiness to please the man who called you, not the crowd. That's number one. Faithfulness means your ability to expend and use everything that God has invested in your life for what he's calling you to do. That parable of talent explains to us what faithfulness is. The man who collected four, five talents, if he has invested four, will he be faithful? Answer me. No. No. He has to use the five. Faithfulness is a, is a rule. In fact, it's a lifetime challenge for every one of us who serves in ministry. So when people are clapping for you and saying you are doing well, when you get to your closet, you go and kneel down. And I'm praying to the man that I call you. I really hope I'm doing well, like people are telling me. I hope they are not deceiving me. Because you will step into eternity and I'll be, I'll be shocked. Eternity. Many things that you have celebrated today, you will get into eternity and you will not see them. And they are massive with crowd. They are massive with crowd. Okay. Number six. Are we in number six? The rule of the rule of suffering. Why did I say? I know they don't teach you in church. Your pastor don't teach you. <laughs> the rule of suffering. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29. It is not only a privilege for us to believe in Jesus but to suffer. Suffer for him. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. Endure hardship. Like a good soldier of Christ. In fact, some translation says endure suffering. Hebrew 13, 13. Let us go to him. Outside of the camp. And bear the shame that he bore. And bear the shame that he bore. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Paul said, I'm in chain. I'm in chain. Like a criminal. 
But I know that the word of God is not chained. I mean, chained like a criminal. And this is what I mean. When you want to serve in ministry, that service will always take you out of your comfort zone. That service may deny you pleasure. That service may expose you to danger. You know when the apostle got their call, they got suffering with it. They got persecution with it. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Those who want to live a righteous life in Christ Jesus, they will do what? They will suffer. Even Jesus didn't hide it. Jesus didn't hide it. Can I ask a good question, my young men and women? Are you ready to suffer? If that is all you will have, you know they have this, they have, they have deceived us wrongly, our fathers. Or is it that we deceive ourselves? That when a man is called into ministry, is drinking malt and pepper soup. He say, Jesus has suffered, we are just to inherit it. I, di I didn't see that though. Because you see, if that theology is true, no apostle will suffer because Jesus has already suffered for them. But almost all of them went through suffering. In fact, second, second generation missionary like Timothy went through suffering. Okay, the point is this. I'm not just talking about lack of money. I'm saying that serving in ministry must cost you something. And sometimes it can cost you your life. Hello? You know the reason why we are not advancing the frontiers of the gospel is this. People have been taught that if you sign up as a missionary, suffering is your portion. And nobody wants to suffer. So nobody wants to go for mission again. Even Christians don't want their children to become missionary. Vance Amfa, an American pastor, says, we move from comfortable home to a comfortable car to a comfortable church. What do we know about the suffering of Christ? What do we know about the suffering of Christ? Okay? I just share one more and I will close. Uh, <clears throat> is that the seventh one now? Okay. Sixth. Okay, quickly. Let's. Well, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, the next one is called the rule of faith. The rule of faith. That's different from the rule of faithfulness. Okay, Second Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. Second Timothy 1, 4. The work of the Lord is done by faith. Hebrews 11, 8. Abraham, by faith. When he was called to go to where he was going to receive his inheritance, obeyed and left, not knowing where he was going. Enoch by faith. Moses by faith. Okay? All of those, all of those people, they labor by faith. You know why? If you are not ready to do God's, if you are not ready to do ministry by faith, you will soon give up. Okay, so I resigned as I said full-time ministry. The first week of my full-time, a woman gave us 300,000 ah. No wonder everybody is going for full time ministry. I say, "Go down, bad ulele." About three days, let me jill. Two times in a month. Ah, we go single con. I say, after that three hundred thousand naira, it looked like heaven closed on us. You know why Yoruba say, "Wari bed ye, wa kwelo," and yet. A faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. In the midst of those challenge, my wife will ask me, Yoga, are you sure you are calling to this ministry? I will scratch my head like this. I said, I think so. If not, <laughs> but 
But I kept telling myself, let's follow it through and see where it ends. Let's follow it through and see where it ends. James and Mary Moffat were sent into South Africa as a missionary. Seven years. And there was no single convert. In one January, somebody called them. Okay, it was on the day of GSM and all of this. What? You will be celebrating your birthday in the next three months. What do you want? How do you want us to send to you as, as birthday gifts? John says, uh, send us only communion tray because we will not have convert here. As at that time, there was no one convert. Three months later, the day that only communion tray got to South Africa, they were baptizing their first set of converts. He just spoke by faith. Adon Rajutsin was in Burma. Seven years, no convert. William Carey, he didn't there. Seven years, no convert. The church that sent them said, William Carey said, no, we die here. The first, the wife died in India. Because she could not cope with the rigor of mission field, she went mad and died. The first son died. William Carey Labry went up in flames. Everybody abandoned him. And said, come back to England. Say, I'm not coming. I will see the end of this. By the time William Carey finished his labor in 40 years, every civilization in India can be traced to that man. Just Google his name. He started the first newspaper in India. Translated Indian language, the Bible into Indian language, about seven languages in India. Started the first horticulture. I mean, even started the first university in India. Every civilization. Why? By faith. By faith. I pray that in the days of adversity, may your faith not fail. May your faith not fail. Can we stand up? I'm sharing the last one. The rule of eternity. What we are called to do is beyond here. What we are called to do is beyond here. Philippians 4.18 Philippians 3.18 I have often said it to you and I say it again. This time with tears in my eyes. Verse 19 some people are enemy of the cross. Their God is their belly. They glory in their shame. Okay. Verse 20 says, Our citizenship is not here. It's in heaven. Colossians 3 verse 1 and 2. Now that you have been raised with Christ, set your affection. Set your gaze. We are in heaven. Hello. For an average man, that is calling to ministry today. Where's our gaze? Where's our gaze? Can you pray this prayer with me? Oh Lord, my Father. I can't hear you. Oh Lord, my Father. Everything that will discredit me in ministry, let your mercy prevail over my life. Can you please pray? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The prayers of my heart. The cry of my heart. Everything that will discredit me in ministry. Lord, let your, let your mercy. Let your mercy. Let your mercy. Let your mercy. Let your mercy prevail. Lord, let your mercy prevail. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I like to pray with these two set of people. If you are there, can you please come? I don't have. To, I don't have time. God gave you some rules. Some times ago, you know it. It was definite. It was clear. In fact, you started, but somehow you began to violate that rule. Of your consecration. God say mercy in the house today. Can you please come? I want to pray with you. 
The second set of people I want to pray with. You are there. You are there. Sometimes ago, you ran into an attack. Maybe it was because of your carelessness. And since that time, you've been struggling to get up. You've been struggling to get up. If you are there, God said there's a lifting in the house for you today. I can't hear you. There's a lifting in the house for you today. In the name of Jesus. Choir, can you help me with this song? Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Where are you? Come and quench. If you know it, can you please sing it? So, of my soul, bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Pastor, today can you please come? Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Mommy, can you please come? Make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. Come and quench. Come and quench. Come and quench. Let me tell you what happened. You got filled through the front door. You got leaked through the back door. But every leakage in your life today, mercy will seal it for you. I said the Holy Ghost will seal it for you. Everywhere, everywhere virtue has, has leaked out. Everywhere oil has leaked out. Everywhere glory has leaked out. Everywhere hunger for God has leaked out. God will feel it again. Can you take that song one more time? Feel. I cup, Come on, cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Father, my leader, God. Up your two hands. If you are in the choir, this concerns you. Come and join them. I don't know who is that person in the choir. And you are ministering already. Please come and join. There is mercy now. And somebody in the choir, the Lord said you should be among this people. I see somebody, you are still, you are still. Let the door of mercy not close. There's a pastor consecration you have with God that was sustaining you. God bless you. God bless you. Please come quickly. For being honest, there's a mercy door open. Hold it. Hold it. Hold everything. The instrument. If you are still sitting down or you are standing, let this door not close. There's no kid in here. Mercy has opened for you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Father, I bow my knees before you. Lord, we ask for mercy. Lord, we ask for mercy. Lord, we ask for mercy. Lord, let your mercy prevail over judgment. Lord, have mercy upon this one. The Bible says, if we cover our sin, we will not prosper. Lord, behold your people. They have come out, Lord. They have uncovered and they acknowledge 
that they have broken their consecrations with you. Or they were smitten and they could not stand up for a long time. But they have obeyed this instruction to come out. Father, please have mercy. Father, please have mercy. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. That which the enemy have stolen, kill and destroyed. Every good thing the enemy have stolen, kill or destroyed in these lives. Jesus, let there be restoration. And let it be more abundantly. And every loophole the enemy has been using today by the eternal blood of Jesus they are amended they are closed up every instrument the enemy has been using to siphon your deposit your unction your servant told us the pouring is not the issue if you press in God we pour but the continuity Lord I pray for every life here Lord the grace to sustain what you have given to them let it come upon them and you gave us a very important instruction to your servants that every time God does a major thing in a man's life the enemy will come suddenly with temptation because until you are tested you cannot be trusted God will even allow the devil to tempt us it's scriptural but Lord we are praying as we leave this mountain to go back to our various locations every temptation the enemy throws our way give us grace to overcome them the bible told us that when jesus got an approval his heaven was open the holy ghost came down the spirit of god came down upon him and god spoke this is my beloved son immediately the bible says the devil came to tempt him but all the three temptations overcame, and as he overcame the bible says his fame spread abroad lord we pray that all you have done for us in this mountain and that which you still do every angle the enemy will come to take it away or tempt us to steal or kill or destroy them give us grace to overcome by your mercy help us overcome by your mercy help us overcome Give us grace, Lord, that all you have done will last. Lord, please, for us who have forgotten our specialized consecration that you gave to us personally, please, Lord, speak again. And give us power to do them. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your servant you've sent to us. And to guide all what you have done and what you want to do. Oh, we are grateful. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for not hiding your mind from us. Thank you for not giving up on us. That that's how you do us every time for us, and yet we go and we lick it away. Thank you for coming for us. Give us grace to be watchful. Give us grace to be self-controlled. Give us grace to be vigilant. Give us grace to be sober. In the name of Jesus! Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray.